who um, he's, he's a blessing to us. I thank God for allowing him to not be afraid to utilize his, his talents for the, for the kingdom. Thank you, Silas, for allowing your light to shine. Merry Christmas. Next week this time, we'll be sitting around, opening up gifts, worrying about our bank accounts, <laughs> wondering whether or not we spent too much, whether we spent too little, whether or not we spent enough time with those dear family members or not. I have an encouraging word for you all today. It will be coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry because we were shown mercy, we do not give up. Instead, we have renounced shameful, secret things. Not walking in deceit or distorting God's message, but commending ourselves to every person's conscience and God's sight by an open display of the truth. But if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel or the glory of Jesus Christ. Who is the image of God? For if for we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves because of Jesus. For God said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. If I was to, to label this topic today, my encouraging words to everyone who was sitting under the sound of my voice today, the topic would be, may your days be merry and bright. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you have done for us throughout our lives. <clears throat> Most of all, we want to thank you for this gift that you sent us over 2,000 years ago, which is... The, the greatest gift of all, Emmanuel. God is with us. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thank you for sending him to die for sinners like us. Help us in this time, in this season, to remember why we celebrate Christmas. It's not for the gifts It's to celebrate the coming of a Savior who is the light of this dark world. Now, dear Heavenly Father, let my weakness find your strength and I will be all right. May all my secrets know your love, dear Heavenly Father, and I will be all right. Lead me, Lord, to your home and I will be all right. Let the darkness drown in light, dear Heavenly Father, and I will be all right. Where I can't see, please give me sight. And may all my fears know your face, the Heavenly Father, and I will be all right. May your days be merry and bright. Tis the season to be jolly. Tis the season to be festive. Tis the season to be joyful and bright. But for a lot of people, this, this season could be full of woes, sadness, defeat, and darkness. 
about a week or so ago, some of you seniors had the pleasure of, of, of running 155 miles per hour on the Lowe's Speedway racetrack. And as y'all was traveling that fast, you all was able to see the bright Christmas lights. I heard tell that you all said that that was a, a joyous time and, 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 and the lights were, were so bright and they were so beautiful that you had to tell Brother Dan to slow down. Stop going so fast so I can take, stand in awe of these beautiful lights. Lights is, is, is a Christian con, um, tradition that symbolizes Jesus and the light that he brings to this dark world. Some people have a tradition of going down to McAdamville and going riding through the, the neighborhoods and see all the beautiful lights. Different colored candles uh, represent different qualities of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The white candle rem represents Christ's purity, while the pink candle represents joy. This, this, when you think about lights, lights are a symbol of hope. Lights are a symbol of, of, of the goodness in the world. These Christmas lights are designed to remind us that, hey, just like these lights that's on the houses, or on the lampposts, they should be reflective of Christ and his coming and, and, and reflective of us and the joy that we have to celebrate that he came and that he is coming back again. The darkness. The darkness can represent gloom and sadness. You all know that I... I now work part-time, about 10 hours, 12 hours a week in the mental health field. And, 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 and those who suffer from depression, we liken that to as darkness. So whenever I would go into someone's house that, that is experiencing depression and they have the, the, the curtains closed, the blinds all closed, and it's very dark in their house, I say, hey, what's going on? You need some light in here. Wow, Victor, you need the light so it can cut through some of this darkness so it can illuminate the room so you can feel joyful and happy. As I cut, pull back the dark curtains, as I open up the blinds, you can see the light starts seeking in and you can see their affect changing. This is what we should do in this dark world as Christians. We must open up those curtains, those blinds, when other people are experiencing darkness. And that's why I want to encourage you, may all your days be what? Merry and bright. Light in the Bible is used to symbolize God and his faithfulness and his holiness throughout the whole scriptures. Today we use lights to remind us of, of Jesus. Remind us of like I said earlier, what he, he did for us by, by wrapping himself in human flesh in the form of a baby and, and, and being the greatest gift to all. The great theologian, Ben Crosby, <coughs> he sang these, song, these words. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just like the ones I used to know, where the treetops glisten and the children back then listen to hear the sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write. Listen to what he tried to encourage the people in this song. He said, may all your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. He wanted to go back to the time when Christmas was white and bright. Why? Because maybe somebody that was in these times was experiencing some darkness. 
did he think in his mind that, that if, if he encouraged people to continue to be merry and bright, that that would um, affect others in a positive way? Who knows? But what I do know is that we as Christians must continue to be merry and bright. Our God is an omniscient God, and one day that he, he, he knew that our lights would grow dim. He knew that life circumstances would begin to darken our illumination, growing old, losing loved ones, losing a certain ability to do certain tasks, losing our hair. He knew that all these things would somehow hinder our ability to shine. He sent Paul to the church of Corinth because they, was, they were living in a dim, dark world. And he was trying to encourage them in, in 2 Corinthians 4 to, hey, look, get your stuff together. Get out of this darkness. And today, he, he is encouraging us through his word to do the exact same thing. In verse 4, it says, therefore, since we have this ministry, the min this ministry that Paul is talking about, he's talking about uh, 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 a new covenant, right? And this new covenant, if you push up further, well, push back, and you look at 2 Corinthians 3, it was talking about uh, uh, this covenant of a new image. It was talking about this covenant, not um, uh, a covenant of stone, but it was, it was talking about this covenant, covenant that was represented, that was embedded on our heart. This covenant it was given to us. This was a ministry that was given to us by the Holy Spirit. Le Victor, what should we do in this new covenant ministry? Thank y'all for asking. What we should do in this new covenant ministry is, is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Check out Paul again. He says, to me, though I am very least of all the saints, check this out. This grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. He didn't stop there. He said, and to bring the light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, not the world, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be known to the rulers and authority in the heavenly places. This is our ministry. Paul was able to recognize his, his strengths and his weaknesses, but he also knew because his, his weaknesses, he, he knew that because God has extended him grace, he was not to give up. And, and I want to encourage you all, if you all going to be merry and bright, not to, to, to give up. Not to give up because people in the world, people in your family, people in your community, people at Publix, Harris Teeter, need to see your light. Why? Why aren't we supposed to give up? Because it says later on in 4-1, because we were shown mercy. I remember this night that I was doing a lot of partying, right? I was doing a lot of partying, and, 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 and I, I, had to I didn't have to drive 40 miles home. I could have stayed with my, 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 my brother and his newly bride, but I, I chose to, to drive home. And in my driving home, I fell asleep. I fell asleep, and I woke up in the bushes on the other side of the road. When I woke up, I was in the, on the other side of the road in the bushes, and I saw this big 
tree standing right there, and I was about to hit the tree. And if I would have yanked the stern wheel, I would have flipped it and hit the tree. But God said, I'm going to extend this knucklehead. I'm going to extend this numbskull a little mercy. <laughs> he kindly just guided my car away from the tree on the other side and put me on the right side. This is why I don't give up. This is why I'm going to try to continue to let my life shine. This is why I'm going to try to be, be, make all my days merry and bright. The Lord has brought a lot of you all through some trying times. He has extended to you all Grace and mercy. So because he has done those things for you, you all need to be merry and bright. Verse 2 states, Instead we have renounced the same shameful secrets, not walking in deceit or distorting God's image. Excuse me, God's message. Paul is, is, is instructing us here to stop making excuses for our sins. Stop making excuses for, for not being, being fully engaged in the ministry. Excuses like, I don't really come to church because, uh, you know, I work all week. I need that time. They, he, he put it on the seventh day that you're supposed to rest. She did that on Saturday because that's the original seventh day, but I'm not going there. Uh, 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 I don't want to fellowship um, at church because sometimes I don't get my way. I don't do this because. I don't do that because. And they, and they would top it off, but God knows my heart. He do. He, he, he knows your heart, and you, we, will have to be held accountable of not being merry and bright. He says later, but commending ourselves to every person's conscience in the sight, in God's sight, by an open display of the truth. Commend in this context mean to show, to give, to prove, to provide. Our, my, our ministry is to preach the gospel so that it can transform the worldly mind, the worldly conscience of non-believers. We, we are commended to, to, to show, give, provide, and prove the, the gospel to, to not only the non-believers, but some of the believers too, because sometimes our faith get a little dark and dim. So, so whenever we see a sister over here singing, showing her light, maybe that will help us to worship. Whenever we hear a prayer, we can, we can see somebody who's praying light, and they can help us to, to draw closer to God. Verse 5 says, verse 3, excuse me, says, but if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. A veil can be considered spiritual blindness. Spiritual blinding, blindness that, that, that affects a person's heart and mind. In the, in the Old Testament, <clears throat> a veil was used to be draped to separate the holy place from the court temple, as well as the holy of holies from the holy place. In, in the Old Testament, the high priest was only able to draw back this curtain once a year, one time a year. And then by the, they opened this curtain one time a year, it, it allowed the people to come in and offer sacrifices to the Ark of the Covenant. This place represented the, 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 the sanctuary of God here on earth. But because Jesus came, 
this veil, and he died for our sins on Calvary Cross, that veil has now opened up to all of us so we don't have to go to no high priest. We can go directly to God. This new covenant, this ministry that we should share with the lost and the CEOs, we cannot afford to, to lose our light. We have to tell them that the veil has been lifted. It has been opened and it has been removed so that you can see the glory of God. In their case, the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel or the glory of Christ who is the image of God. A lot of people can't see the light because they're blinded by the gods of this world. Television, radio, their 401k. All these gods, has, they have blinded individuals and they can't see the light. Therefore, it's our job as Christians, as believers, to be merry and bright and reflect the light of Christ. Because he called us to be the light. Matthew 5, verses 14 through 17 says, You are the light of the world. A city situated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and put it under a basket but rather on a lamp stand. And it gives light for all who are in the house. In, in, the, in the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and, and give glory to God, your Father in heaven. If, if, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're a fan of um, Veggie Tales, or... You remember this song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No. I'm going to let it shine. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, till Jesus come, I'm going to let it shine. And, and this simple little song that we sang as kids, and that we're still singing now, is still prevalent today. Because we must continue to be merry and bright until what? Jesus come back. Why? It says here in your scripture, so... It can give light for all those in the house. Who's in your house? Your children, your grandchildren, your family members, your friends, your neighbors. Who, 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 who? And then it says, may, so that it may shine before men, your community, the church. We're not to hide our light. Verse 5 encourages, for we are not proclaiming ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord in ourselves, your slave because of Jesus. A lot of times when we're doing this thing called ministry, we can be pumped up. We, become, we, we can become, ah, oh, boy, I sang a good song today. Then God really used me. Or, man, I've been slaving down in that kitchen. Look at all the beautiful food that I have laid out. I'm not saying none of us in here do that. Or, we, 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 we want to take shine for God has given us the ability to do. Mm -mm. That, that can hinder our light. Remember, remember last week, a week before last, Pastor Lee, he encouraged us to, to, to walk in humility. 
Be humble. Because my Bible says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Not I can do all things through the victor who strengthens me. We, 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 we are to, to uh, give acknowledgement to our Lord and Savior who gives us these abilities to do these certain things, to use these certain gifts. For God said, let the light shine out of darkness, verse 6, has shown in our hearts to give light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. We must be merry and bright. We must let our light shine out of the darkness of our lives. We must let our light shine out of the darkness of this world. Why? Because God created us in his image. God is light and he, he, he doesn't like the darkness. How do I know? Once again, it's in his word. 1 John 1, 5 says, Now this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you God is light and there is absolutely no darkness what? in him. If we say we have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness, we are lying. May your days be merry and bright. And we are not practicing the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is the light. We have a fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sins. This is because we are walking in the light. Not only on Sundays and Wednesdays. Well, some, for some of us, sometimes on Wednesdays. We are, we are continuously in a state of walking in the light. And because we are in this continual state of walking in the light, guess what? Our days are going to be what? Merry and bright. Another verse that shows God doesn't like darkness. Now, this is, just, this, this is almost from the gate. This is from the jump start. That he said, man, I don't like light. I mean, excuse me. God don't like darkness. He loves light. He said, he said this, right, in Genesis chapter 1. Verses 1 through 4. We all know this, but check this out. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered this, the surface of the watery depths. And the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the surface of the water. Then God said, let there be. God saw that the light was good. And God separate, separated the light from the darkness. These verses show that since the beginning of time, God did not want anything to do with darkness. But what about when it's nighttime, LaVictor? He threw a moon up there. He, he, he sprinkled some stars up there so we wouldn't be in a complete state of darkness. And, th and that's what we need to do. When it becomes dark in our lives, we need to put the sun up there, Jesus. When, when it gets dark in our life, we need to put some stars up in there. That stars can represent prayer, worship, singing. That can help us brighten out our dark. Our days needs to continuously be merry and bright so that we can help influence others who are living in the darkness to come to the light. I have a story. It's a story about a man named Bill. <coughs> Excuse me. Bill was driving home one evening on a two-lane country road. Work in this small Midwestern community was almost as slow as his old beat-up Pontiac. But he never quit looking for 
um, employment. Ever since the factory closed, he had been unemployed. And the winter was raging on and the chill finally hit home. The road that he was traveling on, it was a lonely road. Not very many people had a reason to be on it unless they were leaving. Most of Bill's friends had already left. They had families to feed and dreams to fulfill. And, uh, but guess what? Bill stayed. He stayed because he buried his mother and his father there. He was born there and he knew the country. He, he had a sense of belonging there. He said, I'm not going to leave this land that I grew up in, this land that I love. He knew the country's road so well that he could drive down the road blind. He could tell what was on the left side of the road and what was on the right side of the road. And, and this was very helpful because Bill's headlights on that old beat-up Pontiac was not working very well. As he was traveling down this road, it started to get dark. Light snow began to fall. He said, I, I, I better get a move on. You know, um, I, I, I got to keep moving. He, he, he was in a, such a rush that he almost didn't see this old lady whose car was stranded on the side of the road. But even in the dim light, he was able to notice that something was wrong. So he, he pulled over that old beat-up Pontiac. He pulled in front of this, this lady who had some, some, some pretty good means. She was driving with, with, with um, one of those prestigious cars. I think it's like a Mercedes. Mercedes. See, it's so, it's so fancy, I don't know how to pronounce it. Mercedes. He pulled in front of Mercedes, Mercedes and he got out the car. He put on a big smile on his face because he knew that the woman might be a little uneasy. A man coming up here driving in an old beat up Pontiac may try to do her some harm. So he put on this big old um, smile on his face and he approached her. Nobody has stopped to help this young lady in that last hour or so since she was broke down. She was thinking in her mind, was he going to hurt me? Because he doesn't look safe. He looked poor. He looked hungry. Now, Bill, he could see that the woman was frightened and standing in the, out there in the cold, so he, so he knew how she felt. So to ease her anxiety, he said, hey, ma'am, I'm here to help you. Um, what do you need? She told him. He said, ma'am, why don't you go in the car and sit in the car while it's nice and warm? I will proceed and, 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 and um, change your tire. Would you mind popping the trunk? She popped the trunk and Bill <coughs> changed the tire. As he was tightening up the, the lug nuts, the, the, the young lady rolled down the window and began to talk to him. She told him that she was from St. Louis and she was passing through and uh, she couldn't thank him enough for coming by and helping her out. Bill just smiled and closed the trunk. She asked him, how much do I owe you? She said, I, I will pay you any amount of money because you were so kind and you were so gracious and you, was, you, were, so, you were so nice and polite and you helped me. How much can I pay you? Bill, even in his poor condition, even though he's been out of work for, for, for a extended period of time, he said, uh, you don't owe me anything. I was just helping someone in need. God knows there are plenty who had given him a hand in the past. Bill knew that, that it wasn't his job to take money from this young lady. But Bill told her, instead of giving me the money, if you really want to pay me back, the next time you see someone who needs help, give the person that assistance and say, and tell them to think about me. So, Whenever you see a person in need, young lady, 
think of me. They got the car started, they left. I'm almost finished. A few miles down the road, the young lady saw a small cafe. She went to go and grab a bite to eat because she had been sitting out in the cold for an hour or so and she was kind of cold, she was hungry, she needed some coffee. So, so she went into this restaurant, not one of her fine dining restaurants, it was a dingy restaurant, you know. And, and, and the outside, it was, there was two old gas pumps. The cash register, it, it sounded like a, a telephone when, when they cashed the people out. Her waitress came over and brought a clean towel to wipe her wet hair. And she had, the, the waitress, she had such a sweet smile. And, 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 and this young lady, this waitress, she was on her feet all day long. And guess what? She was pregnant. But she still had a smile on her face. The, the, the waitress never let the strain and the aches, ache, her aches and pains change her attitude. The old lady wondered how someone who had so little be so given to a stranger. She then remembered Bill. After the lady, after the lady finished her meal, the waitress went to go and get her change from a hundred dollar bill, and the lady slipped right out the door. She was gone by the time the waitress came back. The waitress wondered, where could this lady be? I need to give her her change. As she was cleaning up the table, the waitress noticed a note written on a napkin. There were tears in her eyes when she read what the lady wrote. The lady said, she wrote, you don't owe me a thing. I've been there too. Someone once helped me out the way that I am helping you. If you really want to pay me back, here's what you do. Don't let the chain of love end with you. Well, the waitress, tired and beat up, eight months pregnant, main, managed to clean up the area, fill up the sugar jar, fill up the salt and pepper shakers. She made it through another day. She went home that night and climbed into the bed. She was thinking about the money that the, the, the old lady left. And she was thinking about what the lady had written. She knew how much she and her husband needed that extra money. With the baby due next month, it, it was going to be hard. She knew that her husband was, was laid off, and he was worrying about the money too. And as he laid there sleeping beside her, she gave him a, a soft kiss and whispered in a soft, sweet, and low, and low voice, Everything gonna be all right. I love you, my dear husband, Bill. Because of Bill and his ability to be merry and bright, his light was, was, was bright enough to shine to help somebody else. And guess what? It came around full circle. I want to encourage you today. No matter what's going on in your life, remember Bill. But most of all, remember Jesus and what he gave up. Sitting on the right hand side of his father to come down to be poor and lowly. Bill shed it a light, Christ shed it a light, and I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters.
to continue to have days that are merry and bright. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for, even though it was a simple, simple story, we thank you for allowing your message to be completed by Bill's witness. Please help us to have days that are merry and bright. Not only for us, but for our families, for our church, for our communities, and for this dark world. These things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.